everyone, welcome to Crypto TV. I'm Lisa Amnegard here to give you news updates on all things crypto and Web3. In today's episode, we will be talking about tokenized gold, a trend that has been gaining momentum among crypto enthusiasts and investors alike. However, there's been one demographic largely untapped. Gen Z. Software company Oris is taking up this challenge. Instead of trying to convince a younger audience to invest in gold the traditional way, they're bringing gold to where Gen Z already spends most of their time, in gaming. With nearly 9 out of 10 young people gaming regularly, this generation is more likely to invest in blockchain technology than traditional assets such as bonds, stocks, and gold. Oris is tapping into this trend by connecting traditional gold providers and vault operators with the gaming world. We sat down with Guido Van Stein, CEO of Oris, to understand a little bit more about how this gold ecosystem looks like and how gamers can turn their gaming skills into physical gold bullions. You have extensive experience when it comes to precious metals from investing in mining in, the, in Africa and in the physical world, but also in, um, in Web3 and on the blockchain. So uh, for, my first question is, what, what's more fun? Um, I mean, if you talk about uh, fun, I, 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 I think I'm always a little bit of an Indiana Jones and I like to be in Africa mm. or Latin America going into the, to the, to the wild and, and look at these crowns. Um, so that is definitely a lot of fun, uh, which I'm still doing also with, uh, with another company of mine. Um, I like the web free business a lot because there's so much innovation going on and you literally see that in the traditional world where I worked in, uh, in, in London for a long time, the traditional financial world. I mean, this is a very exciting um, uh, a decade where you see a lot of young people with super bright ideas and, and, and projects and literally changing a uh, very old in industry overnight. And I think that's really exciting about this whole web free uh, 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 narrative and industry at the moment. You are kind of at the forefront in with Oris and you're sort of evolving this concept from, let's say, just tokenizing goals. So I'm really excited to hear what Oris is doing in this space. What I envisioned with my team uh, in seven years ago when we started this project is that there was a diminishing demand under the younger demographics around the world. And uh, what I mean with that is that in general, gold investing in the form of ETF, uh, gold bars, gold coins, was really for the older demographic. So uh, the 50, 45 year old person wants to put away some of his money for uh, a rainy day or to protect himself against inflation. But what you exclude in this uh, uh, narrative is this whole new era, uh, era of people that are growing up in a different world, a world mm. where we live with smartphones, a world where we live with Bitcoin and where we live with blockchain. So this is actually where we start to see how can we work. Uh, my traditional background is mining and, uh, and uh, uh, brokerage. How can we work with the traditional market? So the traditional gold market the brokers, the refiners, the vault operators, uh, the banks, to create a layer, an infrastructure that they can utilize to uh, have all this new usage and utility of this shiny precious metal. And what we discovered then, hey, we can do all these new other things with it. Of course, tokenizing gold itself mm. is not really that sexy app. It's literally <laughs> digitizing the asset and mm. you don't need blockchain for that. You can use a conventional database to do that, like we see with Bullion Vault or other uh, great um, uh, parties that uh, participate in that, in digital gold. But if you really use it to the right extent, you open up all these new possibilities um, like decentralized finance. Suddenly there's lending and borrowing involved. You have units of transfer. I can actually pay with it, which actually happened in some Southeast Asian countries still, that you can purchase big uh, assets like a house with precious metals, uh, for instance, gold. And of course, you open up this whole new atmosphere in digital collectibles and gaming. But you're working with other people that are actually mining the gold. So you don't own the gold. We, we don't own any gold. Mm. We, we, we are a software company. And what we did, we actually built an infrastructure and we partner with, for instance, refineries or mining mm. companies or banks to provide the, uh, the underlying asset. And even in Web3, we're working on a new protocol update uh, that's coming in Q1. And I find it really interesting how you're using tokenized gold in gaming. So can you tell me a little bit more about that user experience, how that looks like? How, so you win, so if you win a game, you'd win gold or how does it work? I mean, this is probably the most exciting part where, where we have been working on for the last 18 months. And 
If you look back at the days of Nintendo and Super Mario yeah. and you had this little box above your head and you jumped against it, what came out of it? Gold, right? Exactly. I think if, if I was to track my brain. It was a little gold coin <laughs> yeah. that came out. Sometimes it was a mushroom or a star, but mm. it was most of the time it were these gold coins. Yeah. Ching, ching, ching. So gold has always been a part of gaming experiences. Yeah. Hey, if you go to World of Warcraft or other games, even recent games, mm. um, Grand Theft Auto, a gold gun, everything is gold. Mm. And but it's of course not uh, not uh, uh, real. So what we have been looking at, okay, how can we make this experience as real and make it actually a real unit of value? Yeah. And if you see these uh, skins and collectibles going on eBay, sometimes for a million dollar plus, we said, okay, we're actually gonna work now with games where for instance, hey, I'm have a crown on my head, but it's real gold. I have this armor on my body, but mm. it's real silver. And this sword in my hand, it's thousand dollar gold. And this, Items that can be used in, in gaming can also be transferred back into our ecosystem. So if you win this gold sword or you capture it, yeah. you can actually use it for paying uh, via protocol as well, because it is really backed by tokenized yeah. gold. It is really that $1,000 of gold, and it can be come back in the system where you can make it uh, 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 in value again. And what about um, sort of depositing that, going to a depository to get the physical asset of gold. Yeah, that, that is possible via the broker. So we have an entire broker network uh, where you can actually exchange or redeem uh, uh, fiscal bullion. You need to come, to, for instance, if you want to go to a vault, because the standard we have in the vault is 400 ounce bars or kilo bars. So you need to have quite a lot of tokens because a kilo of gold is almost $90,000. Uh, that's the minimal threshold that you need to have to take yeah. a kilo out of the vault, yeah. of course. I have to say, if you want to take something out of the vault, there are procedures and costs in place because Brinks will not go into the vault for free and get mm -hmm. the bar out and, uh, uh, and, and, and deliver it to you. So mm. there's insurance uh, uh, coming on top of that and also um, uh, the handling fees of the, the logistics operator and the vault operator. Uh, I was thinking about also when it comes to earning gold or even if that's buying gold on the blockchain or through these games, is there any smart contracts involved or how do, or or what do you own do you own the actual physical uh the warrant or the bond of gold or what do you own you, you own actually the physical because uh, like i said the representation of a t gold is directly traced back to the physical underlying in that vault in switzerland or london sorry and if you have one of the upper level assets, so up built on top of T-Gold, so for instance, the gold sword or a digital collectible or a Rolex in gold mm -hmm. uh, that was done via branding. Those are again digital collectibles but that can be traced back to gold. So in the end, it's all traced back to this physical underlying in one of the fault locations around the world. Okay, okay, interesting. And what Oris is doing, um, sort of taking this traditional, uh, this traditional method of just buying and trading gold, but you're also applying it into gaming. Are there other, are there other areas where you see um, tokenized, uh, tokenized gold playing a bigger part when in Web3? Like, will we see it in NFTs or will we see it in other areas as well? Or what can you say about that? Uh, definitely. I mean, the, the, for me, the most exciting part about uh, tokenized gold is actually you're opening up not only new markets like in Latin America, Africa and Southeast Asia, but you're opening markets that never existed. I mean, uh, right now, what we're doing, for instance, in this digital collectible, but also in gaming and esports markets where we're entering into, uh, which will all be announced already in, 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 in this month, November. I mean, this is so exciting. Mm. This is not uh, uh, trying to take a piece of the pie from your competitor. No, it's literally growing new markets for a product that never existed. And anybody in my uh, business should be super excited about this because this will create new demand. It will create mm. new users. It will excite new people, mm. which is very important for, for, for an asset class like gold. Do you think it will disrupt the price of gold? Um, if it done properly, uh, of course it will disrupt because you have to understand if you look at current access to the to the gold markets, there's a lot of people that excluded uh, uh, by it at the moment and they will get access to this pro uh, product by, for instance, uh, a tokenized gold, which is provided by a lot of our uh, um, uh, colleagues uh, around the world. Mm. So there's a lot of demand coming out of definitely the BRICS uh, countries at, uh, at the moment. And I think it will not stop uh, um, uh, anytime soon. So I'm very bullish about the price uh, price of uh, of gold as well. Yeah, um, I'm really excited. And uh, 
I just want to ask if anyone's interested, where can they find you? How can they get in touch with you? Um, well, like I said, my name is Guido Fenstein, yeah. so that's the first name to, to, to get in touch with me just by Googling it. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, uh, we have our new website that just launched. You can find it on uh, aurus.org, so that's A-U-R-U-S.org. Uh, and there's all the contact information. Uh, mm -hmm. You can get in touch uh, with the team. We have quite a big Telegram channel and uh, an X uh, accounts as well, where, we, uh, where our team is always active to answer any questions. And uh, yeah. Uh, so reach out uh, whenever you want. Thanks for watching this week's episode with Guido Van Stein. If you're interested to know more about Auras, go check it out and let me know what you think. And make sure to tune in to Crypto TV for more content on Web3 and crypto. And I'll be seeing you next time. <laughs>